I'm sorry, Earth is closed today. You should look the new 3-0, the Infinity Saga, Avengers Infinity War, the Iron Man Mark 50 DLX figure. Three Zero and Marvel Studios are excited to present the DLX Iron Man Mark 50 as the next figure in the Marvel DLX series. It adopts the classic colors of red and gold and with the multi-layer coating process and highly replicates the design of nanotechnology suit that appeared in Marvel Studios Avengers Infinity War. This fully articulated collectible figure stands approximately 6.9 inches tall and is constructed of Three Zero's renowned DLX die cast system with 48 points of articulation. While Earth may be closed, we are certainly still open having a look at some new hot items from folks over at 3.0. Before we get a closer look at the DLX Mark L or Mark 50, I'd like to thank the folks over at 3.0 that did provide this sample we could have a look at in this video. He has tons of accessories, and of course I'll also bring back in the Mark III, a figure we just recently looked at here on this channel for comparison so you can see the difference in armors and how Tony has evolved this suit since. Before we get ahead of ourselves, though, let's go ahead and grab the tape measure just to see how tall the Mark 50 stands. Taking it right to the very top of his domed head, you're looking at the Mark 50 being six and a half inches in height, or it's about 16 centimeters tall. And of course, as promised, we're going to slide over the Mark 50 and bring in the previously, just recently, in fact, looked at Mark 3. And while they are perhaps the same size to one another as I put them back to back, I would say, if anything, maybe the Mark 3 would be a little tad bit taller. And that's not really that far off, really, when you think of the fact that it's a practical suit that he's wearing over top of his head. That would give him, of course, a little higher of a reach. The nano suit literally just conforms around Tony's body. And that could also explain why the, the Mark 50 is slightly shorter than the Mark 3. And while Tony is sporting a slightly more stylish suit this time around, he still manages to get the same type of display stand that was already packaged before with the Mark III. The stand itself, all still molded here in black plastic, though what is different is not the Infinity Saga, that's still the same. But down below there, the somewhat placard says now Iron Man Mark L or Mark 50. I've already taken the liberty of adding the adjustable post. This slides in via the hole that's on the top. Just plug that in place. And just above the plug, actually, there's a swivel hinge that swing swivels this back and forth like a windshield wiper. You can also then take this part and this hinges back and forth this way. So as you can already see, there's lots of different ways that you can pose Iron Man. Further up from the post, there's also an adjustable knuckle right here. And then a little further from that, there's also an adjustable knuckle here as well. So there's quite a lot of range of motion that you can get with just the neck alone. And then on the end of it, you can see there's a three prong plug. This will actually, if you take the figure and spin it around, locate it at the back. It always has to be down here in Tony's behind. Anyways, we're going to just remove this plate. Careful, though, while removing it that you don't lose it. Put that to the side. And, of course, there you've got the hole that this then plugs into place. Now, I found, at least with the Mark 50, the prong or the plug doesn't seem to plug in place. Wow, that was a whole lot of peas. As much as I noticed with the Mark, with Mark 3, it plugs in there. But maybe perhaps there's, because that screw seems so close, I mean, that doesn't seem like a very deep, recessed square. Maybe because of that, yeah, I think that might be the thing that's preventing. I mean, you can still plug it in place. And I would certainly say if you're wanting to put them in a flight pose, for example, just remove that. You may want to actually move it down first. I think when I had looked at the Mark III, I simply just moved Tony down with it. But yeah, it still holds it. But I find it's not, it doesn't go as deeply inside as what it did with the Mark III. I'm just bringing back now the Mark III so I can show you the difference of where the batteries go. In both the cases, they are requiring AG1 batteries. And in both the cases of the 50 and the 3, neither of them actually came included with the batteries. As already mentioned, though, the batteries themselves are pretty easy to come by. Simply just go to places like Amazon, you can get yourself an entire tray. Now, I did say before, I think it was like a pack of 12. It may have even been like a pack of 15. And it was about a dollar or so each, but it worked out to be like 12 to $15 for an entire tray.
Not bad at all. But why I am bringing back, though, in the Mark III was just to show you where the battery compartments go. If you remember watching that review, uh, hopefully you did, the top of the dome actually slid off. I keep calling this his dome, but that's literally what it is. You just slide that off. The battery compartment is still in there, and the switch to light it on and off is just in front of that. The arc reactor, though, slightly different to what, uh, what we will be looking at with the Mark 50. You literally, again, just rip Tony in half against his better judgment. And inside, there's the battery compartment that, again, would hold the two AG1 batteries. You need two for the head, and you need two for the torso. And, of course, both would light up in the process. Uh, with the Mark 50, though, it's slightly different. Picking up the Mark 50, though, first of all, you don't need to rip them in half. And thank goodness you don't either. You'd be breaking up such a great-looking sculpt that we'll talk more about in a moment. Now, with his, though, you actually have to take the head. Well, first of all, you have to remove the head completely from the neck, divorce it from the neck, and there's the screw battery compartment right there. You have to unscrew this to take this whole top part. Basically, this is the part that is left behind. You take the entire head off, and the battery compartment is located inside of that. And then from there, once that's in place, you're going to then take this part, and you have to separate it. So basically, where this gold is, see the gold just below the red? Right above that, there's a little seam. Get your finger in the seam and pull this up. And while for the first time I did this, I thought this was the battery compartment until I looked again at the instructions. And again, you have to unscrew the bottom in order to pull this whole part, part up. Once that's though off, I'm going to go ahead and just press the button here in the front. It's a little smaller of a button I also noticed as well. So if you're having any difficult time, for example, you grab yourself a screwdriver or you could grab one of the many, many accessories he comes included with. And you just flip the switch from there. Again, it's a very, very small button. Do I have it? I don't know if I have it. I actually have it. There we go. And that just switches on like that. You'll notice, though, in the in the case here of his eyes, the eyes are a little more cloudier than what we saw before with the Mark III. Mark III's was a very bright white. But because they've actually got the light source a little further back, and they've slightly tinted the lenses of the, of the, of the eyes, well, let's say the glasses, it does resort in his eyes being slightly little more of a bluish first of all color and also looks like it's a little bit more cloudier as for the arc reactor though again you're not going to be ripping any bit of tony apart the only thing you have to remove though is the front of his torso this front plate comes off and then you have to unscrew the sides here of the screws for both the sides and then the batteries sit inside of this you're just literally pulling this out putting the batteries in and then popping it back in one thing I will say, though, and I don't know if I even got it in completely, is when you are putting this in, you'll notice right away, first of all, the on and off switch is just in between those two screws. There's the light source right there. But when you are putting the plate back in, it has these four little clips, one, two, and then three and four on the other, and that slots into the sides. When you're putting it in, you'll notice it leaves a little gap. If you push to the top of it, then it opens the bottom. If you push the bottom, you already know where this goes. It leaves the top remaining. Now, again, I think I have it in all the way. I tighten as far as I could get it on both the screws. And it doesn't seem like it still leaves behind a ledge. You can see there's the gap space between the top and the bottom of the actual plate that covers over the torso. But again, like the eyes, it's not as bright of a light as what we got with the Mark III. It's again, slightly more distorted. And they've also colored the arc reactor plate in a nice blue. The eyes, again, between the eyes and the chest, it lights up really nicely. The only thing that's different, though, in a slightly smaller scale Tony like this is just the fact that all the other lights that would normally be on a six scale figure don't light up, unfortunately, here on a smaller version of Tony Stark. It's fine, really, because I wouldn't want to think that I would have to go in and change and remove all the plates on the thighs, the arms, all that stuff, just to be able to get a light source uh, emitting from all of those extra spots. They've gone and nicely gone in there and colored it, and that's more than enough for me. And doing pretty good for himself. The Mark 50 also comes in clue with a lot of accessories. We'll have a look at these individually. And of course, I'll also show you how they attach onto the figure's body. If while though watching this review, you're a little disappointed, for example, that 3-0 had left off a certain accessory, just know though that 3-0 are also going to be shipping separately an accessory pack that's going to go specifically for the Mark 50. You know, again, to fill in all of the gaps of the things that were omitted with this release. The figure comes in clue with some foot thrusters, and he also comes with some repulsor blasts, which I think was also the first thing we had a look at when we had a look at the Mark III. Picking up at least one of each, so you can see the difference between the two. One is slightly longer, one is slightly thinner, and the other one being chunky and shorter. Both of them are actually being done here using a translucent orange plastic, 
and really the way they've sculpted him, don't they kind of look like icicles? They've frosted the ends of them. This is, of course, where the exhaust would come out. And in both the cases, they're actually using the exact same peg. I think we did actually talk about this for the Mark III. Being the fact that they also did use the exact same peg, you don't have to commit to the idea of necessarily using, say, the longer one for the th foot thrusters, the shorter one for the, the repulsor blast, or vice versa. You can use either one of them. To show you what I mean by that, picking the figure up right now, the bottoms of his feet do have holes. I'm going to take one of them, that's the longer one, and I'm going to take the one that's the shorter, chunkier one. You can see, yeah, either one of them can be plugged in place. I think really the intended plan is to have the shorter ones for the, the actual thrusters on his boots, and then the longer ones being the ones that attach for a repulsor blast. But again, you can use either one of them. And detach those for the time being, put the figure back down here for a moment. And I guess while we are certainly on the topic, though, of his repulsor blast, I'm going to also pick up the hands that are dedicated for doing those. Now, these hands are, in fact, picking up the other hands here, too. These hands are actually the angled hands. One does have completely painted in the middle with the silver. That's the ones that don't actually have the, the repulsor blast attaching to them. And then this one is one that's ex exactly, almost identical to it. And it, it's the one that has the hole. So, again, you can either take the shorter repulsors, or you can also take the longer ones as well. For how small the hands are, I think the better suited one is to actually go with the thinner variety, but again, you can go with either or if you want to. Uh, other things that also come included with the figure, I'm just going to move those out of the way. The figure also comes included with some relaxed hands. It's weird because the way they cuff the end of the, the hand, because it's supposed to be a continuation of his arm, it kind of actually looks like oven mitts. Doesn't it kind of look a little like an oven mitt? Of course, this oven mitt is a little bit more higher end than the oven mitts you probably have around your house. Painted inside the palm, again, you've got the silver, a really nice use of this dark crimson, and you've got the gold here on the knuckles. But again, because it's a flatter hand, it does, for me at least, kind of look like an oven mitt. The figure also comes with gripping hands. Now, normally, you would not see an Iron Man coming included with gripping hands. You're probably wondering, well, why would he come included with gripping hands? Well, because he comes with one accessory specifically for his hand to hold. I'm going to pick it up right now. This weapon actually is his energy blade. I believe he does actually use this in the movie. And what they've done here effectively is use a translucent blue plastic on both the top and the bottom. And then they've gone and painted the middle of it to match the same coloring of his hands. Now, with these hands being the gripping variety, you have to... You, now, first of all, I would certainly recommend, I have not yet done this, I would probably heat the hand in hot water because that probably would be the easiest way to get him to actually hold the blade. The blade itself because it's also, again, that kind of translucent plastic, you would certainly not want this to break. But again, like this hand, I really should have probably heated up just before I actually hit the record. But yeah, this actually would just, in for all intents and purposes, would attach onto the handle of this. Again, you probably want to use a hairdryer, or certainly as well, you would may want to submerge this in hot water just to soften up the plastic just a little bit. But that's really cool. I might end up finding myself displaying this, although I didn't open up the review with it. I might actually just wrap the review up with him holding the energy blade. It's not sharp either, by the way. You don't have anything to worry about in that department. The other thing that the figure comes included with, and I think these are kind of cool too, he comes included with his nano Qatar blades. These are the Qatar hands that he has in the movie. They're basically just continuations. Being that he has nano armor, he essentially can craft his own weapons, almost like the T-1000, really. Because it is a continuation, you've got the red here to the top, but then it exits from the red and only continues the red in the middle while the rest of it is gold. Doesn't that look really cool? And then, of course, you've got the blue on the inside of that as well. Now, these, simply just go ahead and take the hand. Uh, the one thing I also noticed here with the, the Mark 50 is that his forearms are really easy to remove, leading then to believe that the, the Mark 50 accessory pack that we're going to begin slightly later on down the road is also going to have the replacement arms that are going to attach onto that. And that's the reason why these forearms are so easy to remove. But while still holding onto the forearm, you just simply remove the hand, in fact, you know what, it might be even be easier to hold the form like I've got right now, detach it, then take the appropriate hand that has the Qatar blade, and then just wiggle it. I've also noticed with these, these forearms seem to be sporting slightly larger ball joints. Anyways, we're going to take though the hand that has the Nana Qatar hands. Almost sounds like I'm saying guitar. It's Qatar. We're going to go ahead and then slide it back into his forearm. And that's certainly one way to display the figure. In fact, that's what I did at the beginning of this video. And again, you can simply just rinse and repeat to have it on the other side as well.
Before moving to the rest of the figure, I actually took a bit of a break away from the studio and I went and heated up the hand, not submerging it necessarily in hot water because I didn't want to do any damage to the, like the plastic, for example, that they would have used, but instead rather I used a hairdryer, just softened the finger so at least I could pry away from the, from the palm. And then from there, I was able to actually attach the energy blade because I certainly did want to show you guys what that looked like. Once again, we're going to remove the one that has the Qatar hand, not guitar, Qatar. And then we're going to go ahead and then just replace it with now this hand here. And once again, because we're using a larger ball joint, that's what it's going to look like now when he's got the energy blade. And again, keeping in mind too, with the later released accessory pack, there's going to be a lot more accessories still to be able to add on to the Mark 50 when that set eventually gets released. But going back and getting closer look now at the Mark 50, I can really understand why so many Iron Man fans are a big fan of the Mark 50 suit. First of all, for the more sleeker design that it has, and also for the fact that Tony can always carry around the armor. Unlike, for example, the Mark III, which once again we'll bring back in so you can see how far we've come from suit designs. The Mark III all had to have practical armor added onto Tony's body and had to be removed afterwards. That always mean that in order for Tony to get the suit off, he always had to go back to the place of origin and have the robots remove the suit from him. With a nano suit of the Mark 50, he always had the suit carrying around with him that he could simply just have the nano robots wrap around his body, and he was Iron Man in no time flat. I still like the look of the Iron Man Mark III, but I can again understand why so many people like the sleeker, kind of coiled nature that the Mark 50 had. One little correction I did want to make before we actually start looking at all the details for the Mark 50 is the thing I wanted to mention about the Mark III. Uh, the shoulder, I think, was on the wrong way when we had a look at that in his own review. You can actually take the shoulder off. You see the little loop right there? That's the thing that's going to attach onto the seat clip. This was actually facing the wrong way. And what it ended up doing was it left the space, too far of a space between the shoulder and the rest of his torso. You really do want to have the loop. I'm just going to spin it around here. You want to have the loop actually closest. So there's the loop right there. You want to have it closest to his torso. And that snaps the same way into that C clip, just like that. And now you can see that shoulder sits a lot closer to the body the way it really should have been. I'm going to maybe hold on to him for the time being because I certainly did want to pick up the Mark 50 suit and show you the difference, first of all, with the helmets. While the helmets are very much still the same classic look to Tony, you can definitely see like there's a lot more advancements that they've made for the designs. All this additional silver work, not to mention the stretching of the gold that now goes up the side of the helmet that wasn't there before. The original suit of the Mark III also had the little areas that I was called the ears, but those little circular discs that he had on the side of his helmet are completely now gone. Something also that's not only different about just the sleeker nature of the Mark 50, but also the coloring that they went with too. You can see in this case, it's actually more of a kind of a burnt crimson color versus the cranberry red that we get here with the Mark III. Obviously, I'm not going to do comparisons from one side to the other because obviously you can see there's very much a very simplistic design to the Mark III and a more complicated, more very elaborate looking design than what we get with the Mark 50 suit. I'm going to put the, put the three over there for the time being. One thing I also really liked about the suit on this case was this torso piece right here. Now, with all of the gold accents that we have outlined here in silver, with these being the light sources, because, of course, in the larger scale version of the suits, like the six scale suits, for example, these portions would also be lighting up. It would be impossible to pull that off on a slightly smaller fit figure. And, of course, as well, just think of the pain it would have to be to have to remove, like, the leg panels, the arm panels, just to add extra light sources. I think it's really where it counts. It is in the arc reactor, and of course it's in the eyes. I wouldn't need to have lights anywhere else. But it's certainly colored in the way that it looks like it would be lights. You still have the blue sources of light here, right here at the top, and all in the mid-torso there as well. I always thought when I looked at the Mark 50 suit, especially like this part right here, it either looked to me like a dragon or a snake. Snake might be the better way to compare it, because actually the way they designed the suit, it kind of actually looks like snake coils. All this cool silver that they've added, not to mention with the gold. It's just a, such a neat looking suit. If you like the more streamlined, more advanced looking suits that Tony would get a little bit later on. Now he does have these little back flaps. These flaps, I have to stress, be very careful with. They sit the same way on these little clips. The clips are on the inside here. But if you pull them too far out or too quickly out, these have popped off a couple of times already. You can see there's some additional silver work on the inside of it. It really is the only thing that technically does open up here on Tony's suit if you don't technically count the front panel here of his torso. But again, just be very careful of these. These have, like I said, popped off at least three or four times already for me. 
But the detailing on this guy is fantastic. While I do still like the practical design of the Mark III, I gotta, I can't help but say I still like the look of the Mark 50 suit. It's got such a cool looking design to it. It does still use the, my more primary color of the red and the gold, but it kind of breaks it up a lot more than what we would get with the earlier suits, for example. There's still gold, there's still silver, but they do in such smaller panels that it actually looks like he's got this panel lining that runs down the entire side of his body. Not to mention they're also in his arms as well. Now, he is still die-cast, so like his arms are die-cast, his legs feel die-cast, some die-cast at least. There's some plastic panels over top of that, and of course, primarily, his torso is cool to the touch, all metal there as well, with of course the plastic being the part that we had to remove to install the batteries for the arc reactor, but it's such a really neat design suit. No real complaints at all, even if you aren't more of a fan, even if you're more of a fan of the classic built suits, there's still, I can certainly see why people would love this suit so much. Now, for the articulation on this guy, he does have the ball joint, so not only can you rotate his head technically all the way around, you're going to have a lot of real problems, obviously just because his head, first of all, isn't supposed to turn around all the way, but you can rotate it with help of the neck. The neck is second, technically a secondary ball joint. It also helps as well if you want to have him in a flying pose. It would be the best to have, of course, a ball joint here at the base of the neck, so you'd be able to move, yeah, the head further up. You get, can't get quite the, the high reach that what you could with, say, the Mark III, but you can still have Tony looking up, of course, to see where he's flying to. So the figure does have actually technically a, a double ball joint, one here and then one at the base of the neck. So two working right there. He does have shoulder joints, so you can rotate the arms all the way around. Now, for this, actually, he does have the same sort of idea as what he had for the Mark III. He has these shoulder plates that hinge outward, and they work the same way of being clipped onto these little clips inside. I don't know if you guys can actually see that. They're there, at least, so when you want to move his arms out, for example, though this wouldn't work in the movie. The movie, he would just it'd be like a skin-tight suit. He wouldn't actually have to have anything really moving out of the way. In, in order for a figure to be able to do this, you obviously need to be able to move those shoulders. Now, the shoulders do also. You can also bring the, the arms forward and back this way. The arms, because now we've moved those shoulder joints, those shoulder pads out of the way you can technically now remove the arms all the way around and the figure does also have a bicep swivel now, i'm just going to bring the arms down here i'm going to bring these up because i don't really want them to accidentally be clipped when you are rotating the bicep be just very careful because while you're rotating of course you're going to be hitting this side of the shoulder and i've had it now one time already where this popped right off it was easy to retrieve i clipped it back into place but while rotating the bicep just be careful that you're not hitting the side of the shoulder the figure does have a double hinge on the elbow figure has a rotation in the hand. And then when we get to the torso, this is kind of cool. Not only does he have an upper torso ball joint, but then he has like an accordion crunch to it. So it actually crunches in several different places where you can really have Tony looking down. And again, we can just rotate. He's got a lower waist articulation point as well. Now, when it comes to the legs, the legs normally can split out. He has a hinge joint right there, but yeah, you already saw one thing that ends up happening. I didn't think it was going to happen this time. I'm going to have to go retrieve the leg joint. But what ends up happening is he has a plate right here. Now the plate, they obviously put that there. So when you are moving the leg, for example, this is going to shift out. This one leg, funny enough, doesn't actually shift as easy, but it's also on that same joint. You can see I'm pulling one off right now. So you can see what I'm talking about. This attaches just by here. And once that's clipped in place, the whole idea is that this brings, this comes out, this flips out, so you can get an extra range when it comes to his leg moving out. I wasn't expecting this to pop off as quickly as it did, but that's the reasoning why that that's there. One thing that also helps to aid preventing any of those things from popping off is that you can actually then take his legs and you can pull them away from the joints. You get an extra clearance of about, what, like an inch, about an inch or so, where you can drop those legs lower down. And that's certainly also to help prevent the little thigh piece from popping off like that. And again, yeah, you can move the, the leg out this way also as well. The figure has a double hinge on the knee. And then when it comes to his feet, the feet work also the sort of the same way as what we got with the Mark III. These little panels, the bottom cuffs of his legs, actually hinge outward. So that will get out of the way when it comes to moving like his ankles back and forth this way, up and down this way. And the figure also does have toe articulation. Just again, make sure that you're putting that back when you're, when you're done with it. Short of the fact that I have to go over and now retrieve the leg hinge, the little leg panel that was there. It's a great looking suit. 
I'm really excited to see uh, when we when we eventually get that accessory pack that 3.0 have already advertised online. It's supposed to be coming out actually quite soon. That's going to, of course, fill in a lot of the gaps of those weapons and accessories that Iron Man has in the movie that wasn't already present here with what we already got so far, like the energy blade, the two arm Qatar blades. Of course, we're going to get the other things as well, like the battering ram, that whole back contraption that attaches onto the back of his of, of his body. Those are going to be fun. And of course, when we do have a look at that, I'm going to bring back in the Mark 50 suit so I can show you how all of those pieces attach onto it. And again, whether you like the design of the more streamlined look of the Mark 50, or again, you like the classic look of the Mark 3, 3 Zero doing an incredible job on all of these pieces, being that they're slightly smaller, the price point on these, unbelievable for what they're offering these figures for. If you can get out of the mindset that you have to always be collecting high-end Iron Mans in six-scale format, if you think in set outside that box in a slightly smaller box, think of really the red of what you're getting here with the three zero pieces. They're just as detailed. You have still the light-up functions. You still have the accessories. You still have the articulation. You still have the die-cast metal, but you're getting it at a much more affordable price, and it works much better for a much smaller space as well. So if you guys are interested and would like to get your hands on the new DLX Iron Man Mark 50, he's slated to release the fourth quarter of 2022 for what I feel to be an unbelievable price of $99.99. I'm still surprised that 3-0 are offering up these diecast Iron Man sitting under that $100 price point. I would have actually guessed this guy close to being $150 or $160, but most again of the online sites that have the pre-order available set this guy at around that $99 price point, just, just under that sweet spot of $100. Now, what you're getting with that $100 figure is still a die-cast Iron Man, fully poseable, tons of accessories, and light-up arc reactor and light-up eyes. If you don't feel as if that he doesn't have as much accessories as he could have had, well, obviously, they're also going to be slating to release around that same time an accessory add-on pack that's going to go with the Mark 50. And I can understand why they decided to go that route. Iron Man Mark 50 has probably some of the most weapons, probably a of all the Iron Man suits that he's had in all the movies, the Iron Man Mark 50 suit has probably had the most of those weapons. And I can certainly understand that if they did decide to add the accessories, all of those along with this Iron Man, it would have then got us that closer price point of that $160, maybe even $180 for all those extra things. Because the accessory patch just on its own is at $80. It's like $79.99 for most of the online sites. So it was really smart on their part that if you just wanted the Mark 50, you can get just the Mark 50. But if you wanted to go all out, if you wanted to have all the bells and all the whistles, then you can then always opt down the road to get the accessory pack that's going to be releasing again around that same price point, around that same time frame, fourth quarter 2022. Again, you can get the Mark 50 on its own, or again, you can get the Mark 50 and then get the Mark 50 add-on accessories, something again that 3.0 are going to be offering up separately. Smart, I think, on their part. Once again, a big thank you to the folks over at 3.0 that did provide this sample of the brand new Iron Man Mark 50 from Avengers Infinity War. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section, and maybe perhaps as well. Let me just throw this question out to you, the viewing audience. What's your favorite Iron Man Mark suit? Let me know down below in the comments section. And certainly as well, if you enjoyed this video, hit with a like. If you're loving the content you're seeing and certainly want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the ever crucial bell notification. Popping up also at the very end of this video will be a playlist of other things that I've looked at for 3.0 over the years with many more future to come. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.